Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. Sprint is really pushing the 4G function of the Evo 4G, and rightly so. It's the first smartphone in the United States to have 4G data. But our question is, does 4G really matter? Well, in this video, we're going to try to answer that question. Let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to start off by talking broadly about 4G, and then I'm going to show you 4G. Uh, I have 4G in my area, I live near Philadelphia, so I can actually show you what it's like to use this device as it was intended. And by the way, if my voice sounds a little raspy, I'm just getting over a cold, so hopefully my voice doesn't break up too much. So 4G, generally speaking, is the next evolution of cellular data. We had 3G, 3.5G, and now we have 3G, which is built on Clear's WiMAX network. To put this into some context, uh, on your 3G phone that you have on AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, or any other global carrier, you probably get speeds between 1 and, say, 2.5 megabits per second download speed. Now, if you were at home on a Wi-Fi router, you would probably get a maximum of maybe 10 to 12 megabits per second if you had a very fast connection. On the other hand, Sprint 4G can do a theoretical 10 megabits per second. So if you put it into the context of what I just said, that's like having a Wi-Fi connection wherever you are, uh, which is a pretty compelling prospect, but as we're going to discover later, it's not so simple, and it doesn't really work so smoothly um, and easily, and it's not that fast yet. So what I'm going to do now is cut to some sp speed benchmarks that I ran around my town to try to get the fastest speed possible on Sprint's 4G network. Then I'm going to show you a web browsing session over 4G. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so before I show you some of the speeds that I got, a, a note on the 3G, 4G, and Wi-Fi uh, connections, because obviously that's a lot to handle for a device. Let me tell you how the Evo 4G does it. The device always will favor Wi-Fi. Um, first, it will go to 4G second, if you have it turned on here, and then 3G last. And it switches very seamlessly between 4G and 3G, I've found, so that is not a problem. So I've been using two different benchmarking software, um, versus the speedtest.net application, and the other one is the Extreme Lab speed test. But let me show you what I got from speedtest.net. I think this is one of the most reliable benchmarking tools. So I'm going to go into results. I've run a ton of tests. And the fastest that I have found was right here, 4 megabits per second up, or down I should say, and 1 megabit per second up. And that was, this was really in the heart of Philadelphia. I had 3 out of 3 4G bars. Right now I have 0 out, and now I have 1 uh, 4G bar. And so, to me, this really represents the real world maximum that, is cap that is, this device is capable of right now. Sprint says you should be able to get up to 10 or even three to six. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing six, I'm not seeing five, I am seeing four megabits per second, and it's always about one up. On average, it's about three, and if you think about that, again, in context of what you get over 3G, it's not that much faster right now. And perhaps Philadelphia has slow 4G, but that really doesn't make any sense. So that's what we're dealing with. Now, I wanna show you the hotspot application. Um, since I do have a little bit of 4G, maybe you can get a feel for how fast it is. This is a $29 per month feature. This is a demo unit, so Sprint has added this uh, to this device. And I've got it set up. I put a little password. I'm going to turn this on. It's very easy to use. I'm going to bring out my iPad and show you the speeds I'm getting um, over 4G. You can see I am over 4G. A very limited signal right now, but let's jump over to the iPad. Okay, so here we are on the iPad. <clears throat> reading the New York Times here. So I'm going to go to settings and change uh, my access point to um, Evo. Here it is. And over here on the Evo 4G it just said uh, one connected users and so it's going to connect right now. And I'm going to go to that speedtest.net application see how fast the speed is here on 4G, and we're still on 4G. We're kind of varying between zero bars and one bar, so it really won't represent how fast it is, but again, I'll just show you some, some speed benchmarks that did. Let's see what we get. Nothing too great, and again, this is one of the problems with 4G, is if you have zero bars or one bars or two bars, 
you're going to get slow speeds compared to 3G if you have, you know, one bars or two bars or three bars, that's depending on sort of the granularity of the signal strength, you get a pretty fast 3G signal. You need to have a full 4G signal to really tap the speeds of the network. So I'm going to jump to a video now where I do have a pretty full signal and we're browsing the web. I'm going to jump to that now. All right, so we've got a relatively strong 4G signal here right now, two out of three bars. Actually, just had three out of three bars. I want to show you what it's like to browse the web. First, let's do a quick uh, speed test. And we just actually went down into 3G. And this actually happens a lot. For no reason, um, a good 4G signal will go down to a 3G signal. And so we're only going to get about one megabit per second. But to cancel this and hope that it goes back to 4G. Okay, so we're back in 4G. Let's go to the other speed test application. Really would love to benchmark this with you watching. Okay, so we've got a very strong 4G signal here. We should really get to see how this thing can do. My guess is we're gonna get, ooh, this is, this is good. Uh, so we got about 3.1 megabits per second. That's pretty representative of what you're going to get over 4G uh, in most cases, and about one megabit per second up. Let's uh, get out of this and jump into the web and see what it's like to browse the internet over, uh, over 4G, if the internet icon wants to respond. All right, and here we are, and once again, we've been bumped down to 3G, so let me put in pocketnow.com here, and maybe we'll, maybe we'll switch back. So over 3G, it's pretty darn fast. Let me go into landscape. Just going to jump around and hope that um, we're going to go back into the 4G. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, tap on that headline. All right, and finally we're back on 4G. I went to the settings and I saw that it dropped off. Keeps doing that. Let's go back into the internet and hopefully we can get it so that we're on 4G for a while. So right now we're on 4G, loading pocketnow.com. And let's put it back into landscape. So it's, it's fast. It, it feels as if I'm on an, a Wi-Fi connection rather than a cellular connection. So let me go to Engadget.com. See how fast that comes up. Okay, so we got the mobile version. Let's jump down to uh, hopefully the full version. If that option is here. It is down here. Let's load the full and gadget experience. <clears throat> All right, so it's going to load the main end gadget page that you get on the desktop. Let's see what that looks like and how fast it loads. So again, it's not super ultra fast. It's like you're on a very fast cellular connection or a kind of slow Wi-Fi network. Um, that's pretty much what it's like. So before I answer the question, does 4G matter, let me point out three weaknesses that I see of Sprint's 4G network right now that is keeping me from really loving this 4G thing. Uh, number one, the signal reliability is not as great as it is on 3G. For example, I'm walking down a city block on 3G on my Nexus One or any other phone, and from block to block I have a consistent signal. If I start at four bars, I'll probably be at four bars by the end of the block. On 4G, that's not the case. Reliability of the signal is not so good. I may be at the start of the block with three out of three bars. At the end of the block, I'm at zero bars. So that's problem one. Problem number two is that the speeds aren't that fast right now. And I've tested this. You saw the benchmarks in the center of Philadelphia. The fastest I saw was about four megabits per second, which is about two times faster than the 3G speeds uh, approximately. That's significant, but not, not amazing. Problem number three of the 4G network is that it's not ubiquitous. It's not even close to ubiquitous um, as 3G has become. So I think that where we are going is obviously towards a future where every handset, every smartphone has super fast wireless internet. So you can get downloads as fast as you would get on your desktop computer. <clears throat> Video chat becomes possible and a lot of other stuff that we haven't really even seen yet. But right now with the 4G network in its infancy, it really doesn't matter that much. I have to tell you that using a Nexus One over 3G and an Evo 4G over 4G feels about the same. 
there are very few instances where I'm like, oh wow, that web page loaded fast, or wow, I really downloaded that attachment so much faster. It's just not that much of a difference right now. So does 4G matter? I'd say right now, it does not matter. The 4G is somewhat of a novelty, really a marketing point that Sprint has added to the Evo 4G. 4G is a bright future, there's no doubt, but right now, it's a novelty. Please give the video a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and please subscribe to our channel if you want more smartphone videos. That's it for now.